Yeah. Oh, well, it's so good to see everybody. Um, while there are a few people that I don't know, um, most of you I do, I do know, um, and um, many um, I've known for a really, really long time. So I'd like to dedicate this um, reading to uh, Lori, who um, she and I first met in the late 60s and early 70s around DuPont Circle, um, what I like to call the good old days. Um, and, uh, and actually many of you I've known just about as long as well. Um, and this, this poem, which I, this is really a premiere because I have not read the whole poem um, even though I wrote it some time ago. Um, but I've never read the whole poem, you know, in one piece. Um, and it's a poem that's very dear to my heart. Um, my mother was the most beautiful woman in the world. And she was my, my light, the light of my life. And I wrote this poem actually quite a long time before she died, but I wrote it so that I could, um, I could uh, be there um, through, through her decline and dying um, and in the days since then. She lived to be 96. Um, she didn't want to die. She had to just get so weak that she could no longer live. Um, and uh, the title is The Sleeping Beauty Sonata in C Minor for Cello and Piano. And um, it, it puts together both the stories of Sleeping Beauty and the story of Persephone and Demeter, um, the Greek uh, goddess of um, fertility and growing things, and her daughter, Persephone. And um, the poem really is um, a poem of a daughter coming to terms with all the things that a mother is. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about that. Um, The Sleeping Beauty Sonata in C minor for cello and piano. She tells the stories of the stories. Grace Paley. gargle, they chant, trill, croon, screech, swell, repeat, recapitulate. Who is, who is, who, who, who is, and I cocooned in sleep, cocooned in sleep, wrapped in the floss of darkness. Who, who, who is, who is, who, who? From the deep, rich places, from the dark, dark, sweet spots that smell of fish, of the old ocean we all come from. Fortress of vines, twine in green thread, snake, rope, cord, Virginia creeper, and trembling with trembling hands, porcelain berry, 
bearing its useless fruit. Tear thumb, mile a minute, spinning their furious webs. Greenbrier, wire sharp, hearts of bursten, exploded fire, red tears, kudzu shivers, elephant leaf ears, protective, invasive, alien, marooned among my vegetal jailers, growing and rotting in the musky earth, attend this night music, moons, glaucus, hum, restless hiss of the river churning in its stony birth, silent clang of bedrock terrace as cliff break ferns mine limestone walls. I hear now in this skein of darkness, tendrils of dream, it is I, I, I am, I am tethered, confined here. Here, the grinding of the earth is almost quiet. The great wheels of doing, doing, slowed to a purr. The soft shush of breath oceans the ears in warm milk. Rocked on the ocean of breath, the skeleton, the muscles, cartilage, flesh, twitch and flutter in unison, propelling the body, holding it steady as it rushes through open space, writhing, looping, pushing, pulsing, puckering, tangling it, sliding, humping, hitching, skating, slithering below the wound fabric covering it between the skin and the first, the final dance, individual, solo, the clench and release of cells, out of molecular particulate whirling, below the threshold, in the temperate jungle of the lungs, the stuttering of the opal intestines, murmuring gossip of purple bowels, here, where I lie in wild sleep, unconscious, you call it, but I am not deaf nor blind, only my eyes, my ears are tuned inward to the slush of the blood, silken rustle of Celia, saline beat of fluid at the walls, out of the sub-sizzle, the fault, out of the savage, out of the stranger to touch, shy unease of the brain, my stories unspool and pass on in leaf vibrations through the promiscuous air. The first queen of the world, day didn't start until her birds Giddy, having cracked the shell of sleep, shouted, sang, shrieked the sun away, and its first rays touched the tops of her trees, glinting their leafy crowns with gold. And her supple body turned in its rocky bed, opened her arms to light, to sound, to the aroma of her life, decaying, replicating, ripening, to the sure support of stone, the cushioning of dust and moss and humus, to the buoyancy of water, the circulation of the air. Into her world I was born, expelled from her body, moist nest I grew in, from cell to fish to pig to helpless human, plunged head first into empty air, into the palm of her hand where I squirmed, where I bawled and sucked and rested, stared upward into the radiant face, into her eyes where rivulets pooled, green, brown, ochre, under the shady 
banks, projected sky, leaves, grass, ripply bronze trunks into my own eyes so that those first days I saw only what she saw, the edge of her body, border, boundary line, the edge of my own earth. perception, the God's whim, a child's need. Why was she not invited to my naming? The names the others gave me were soft, fluff, dawn, rose, Persephone. Is it possible to surpass the mother? Who is fairest is fair. Is it permissible? Allowed? Was it carelessness, an error, a breakdown in protocol? After the glitch, the bumble, they tried to cobble a remedy, mitigate fate. Is it possible, permissible? Is it allowed? What fools, they tried to keep me who roamed the pastures of sheep, watched them crop the tender grass, yellow teeth, like bony toes until the juicy shoots, emerald pulp, rolled on the tongue. Sat for hours in the fields, felt the greasy threads, woolen tendrils curl and tickle under my own skin from spinning dirty, white, deep brown, plowed gray. Laid my face to the moist earth, smelled green, growing, Gold blossoming, red ripening, soil rich, black and crumbling like cake. My ears dilated, listened always for the faint tinkling, tingling song of the bells of the lambs lost to sight, hidden beyond the crest of the hills. The distant bleeding and blatting imagined them sad, separated, from their mothers. This unseen procession, nimbus, their tangled coats backlit in the afternoon sun, some on their way to be skinned and eaten, some to be sheared year after year, their fleece dyed and spun to make cloth, woven, cut and sewn into warm cloaks, soft gowns for the ladies, the lords of the court. Some would sow more lambs, more fluff, to be used and blown by this world, to carry on, fair is it, doing whatever it is we do, have done all these years, all these eons of years, to carry on eons of years, and grew lost some of the clouds that had patted my body, waddled my bones. I l learned the lay of the land, who is fair, threaded my way through tunnels and culverts, culverts, passageways of the castle, despite my guardian's invasive alien. Lucky, insistent, stubborn, persistent, that one day, the tower door unlocked. I was up the stairs, my skinny legs leaping and lunging, scrambling up the stone steps towards the top, where, for my protection, so they say, the most beautiful woman, a crone in the mirror, 
was imprisoned. Russet crown, her hair, her eyes, gray, green, brown, like the forest. Who is fairest? Was it my mother? I stood there. In one hand, the glistening needle, a thin tensile strand spun out of the other. Fair, who is fair? Fairest, who is fair? Rest, rest, fair. Yes, sleep has its drawbacks, constrictions, its strictures. Can't scratch the tip of my shoulder blade or wipe the drip from my nose. And of course, I dream of food. Fair, fair, fairest. Who would forget bread, congruence of earth and air, the heady smell of yeast, the crack of the crust as the knife opens it, teeth sinking into elastic flesh, and butter, salt and sweet, the tongue wallowing in a pillowy ooze of fat, little pink buds stroking, stroking the satin sheen scum yellow and pale. An eggplant, glossy black skin, stone colored meat, slips down the throat, unctuous, deep. Ah, and that lustrous pearl tooth plucked from its socket of dirt, white coal, garlic, raw tang of earth, fairest of fair. But those who think sleep a nothingness, a void, negation, hiatus, are much mistaken. Deluded by doing, doing, by the opposable thumb. Who is, who is fair, is fairest. And those six red seeds, their juice thin, just spilled blood dribbling on my lips and chin, clean acid burst on the tongue, great pink slug of survival. Who is fairest, is fair. Oh, the sting of pleasure of the prick of my finger, spindle steel bite into the pad of my finger, Curse or blessing? I feel the electrical tingle still in the tender pad of my finger. But am I helpless, a toy, a trophy for the eager men who visit, who quest, leaping up on the stone scaffolding of my nest, jumping back down, Spring again like manic frogs, their boot heels clang against granite, their swords tearing at vines, slash the new leaves, tongues, vague green, upsetting my peace, balance of the sleeping world. What cool juice do I have to give them? I groan and whimper, wanting to burrow deeper down into the clouds, into the silken cocoon that harbors me. Not yet, not yet, I breathe. Helpless am I, a doll, a toy, a trophy, in this dream of these eager princes who seek, who quest, avid for pleasures of flesh. I hear their labored breathing, the air sucked in, whistling through the hairs of their nostrils, Feel their warm breath like premature spring wind on my cheek, ruffling of wind on water. Don't wake. Don't wake yet. The dream speaks for me. The tremor of their blood beating through flesh, through their fingers as they touch my temples, brush bronze tendrils from my brow, tender shell of my brain, as if battered 
by fat, lazy rain, my skin swells, blossoms, clouds of petals shiver, their lips quivering, yield, melt into mine. seduced me, fine skin covered in finer hair, nostrils soft and taut, the elastic mouth concealing grinding teeth, gathered into sensitive lips, read my palm like braille, nibbled the invisible fur on my knuckles, counted the tendons on the back of my hand, and the delicate veins under the burnished face, like the grain of well-rubbed wood, large, wide-spaced eyes, like tannic pools, like dark pearls, lambent, lucent, opaque. Who wants bare flesh after you've tasted hair, sateen, slicker than skin? And his breath, hot wind, over my mother's fields, golden, rippling, ripening, over her stones and the sparkling dust, over the olives, gray, green, her pride, ancient and fecund. And I, how could I not reach for the hand that reached down, allow it to hoist me up onto the horse as his haunches bunched and he sprang the insides of my thighs gripping the blowing flanks, all sensation concentrated in legs and back, my arms unaware they circled a man's shaped chest as we flew, and only faintly in the distance, like a bell, I heard my mother's cry, and only vaguely in the dream remember leaving her behind. Soon after a long crack opened in the earth, soon after we descended, one great beast, four legs, four arms, three heads, into this world's underworld, my wild weeping, or was it wild laughter, ceased. In this my new home, kingdom of shadow and flame and rock, where the dead are not dead, but speak, carry burdens and dig in the dirt in the walls with trowels and spoons, and they eat. Among them I walked, I gazed, I stared. They dance and they sing. They read and stoke the dark machine, churn the cauldron of the world, and wait while liquid currents of stone heal and turn, and what was buried rises to the surface to breathe, and what was living returns below earth. Why do they make the story so simple, the outcome determined by a god? My mother wept without ceasing. I ate six bloody seeds, none of it true. The juice that stained the corner of my lips was not clotted, but ran translucent red like wine. And my fingers, which pried the seeds loose from the fruit, were stained blue. No, storytellers are too fond of allegory and supernatural power. They want a moral, the teaching moment. But this is a family story. What happened private? between my mother and me, who is fair? 
is fairest. As it's told, we settled into a comfortable routine. I shuttled back and forth between two estates, the green earth and the understory of dirt, salt, stone, and root. Was it fair? Did anyone ask if I was happy? They say I brought the spring. But mother controlled the living, and my spouse was lord of the dead. Of course, nobody knows what went on in our bed. Did I ever bear a child of my own, or perhaps a whole litter? Did they adore me, suckle at my breast, play at my feet, hide their eyes in the skirt of my dress? And no one knows what went on in my head, for who could I talk to then? Now I am old, and my mother is dead. Her head almost a skull, her hair a stream of white water in bright sun. Rise and fall of the belly stopped, cold rubber her hand, jaw frozen open, teeth ivory gravestones of all the words now trapped in her throat. Now it is spring. In my mother's fields, a fine green down covers the earth's brown cheek. How foolish the gods to pretend like teens that they are immortal when all life teems, then dies. The verna pool dries, the mud cracks. More foolish still their children, you and I, to believe they will stand forever between us and the devouring earth. Thank you.